So it looks like the Shelby GT350R is going to start using parts off the GT500. And it might be a little more expensive because of it. Before I get started on this video, I want to let you know I'm going to be showing a little bit of a bonus clip at the end of each of my videos from here on out. It's just a small little news clip, not related to the subject video, but sometimes there's news out there that isn't really large enough to make an entire video on, so I'm going to put it at the end of each of my videos. Considered a little bonus, you never know what it's going to be, so you're going to have to stick around at the end and find out. Now the Shelby GT350 is Ford's track car. It's not the highest horsepower Mustang out there, but it was built specifically for the track. And the 350R takes it one step farther by deleting the rear seats, you know, the big carbon fiber wing, and a couple other odds and ends. I'm not going to get into it because I'm probably sure you already know. But the thing is, it is a purpose-built track car. The handling on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's got a lightweight flat plane crank that revs out to 8200 RPMs. That is perfect for the track. You have a wide RPM band, carry you through the corners, and 526 horsepower. But these are specs you already know. I'm getting sidetracked. It seems like Ford does such a good job on the GT500 handling that they're going to start using it in the GT350R as well. The GT500 is no longer a one-trick pony. It's always been the straight-line high-horsepower car. But now this one can take corners as well. You can take it to the track or the drag strip, and you will be able to dominate both. Now, that being said, we can't have the GT500 out cornering the GT350R, because that is the GT350R's job, after all. So, the new high trail steering knuckle from the GT500, along with the new electronic steering, is going into the GT350R. It completely changed the steering suspension geometry, and it's going to get new upgraded software for that electronic steering. Now, all in all, Ford says this is going to dramatically improve the GT350R's cornering ability, as if it wasn't already amazing. So I'm kind of anxious to see if they take these changes, put them on the track, and compare them to the previous model. Nothing else really is changing, except for the fact that they're also removing the resonators from the exhaust system to try to save weight. Not only are you going to save weight, but now obviously the car is going to be louder. And everyone loves a louder car. Now I did mention that this probably is going to bump the price of the GT350R. The starting price for the GT500 is $73,000 and change. But with these new components, the GT350R is going to start at $535 more than the higher horsepower GT500. But there's a couple things to consider. Now the track pack for the GT500 is an additional $18,500. That is astronomical price for a track pack. Now that package for the GT350R is standard. So there's no add-on for that package. For the additional $535, you're getting all of that already. If you were to put that on the GT500, obviously that's an additional $18,500. So is it more expensive? Yes and no. It is more expensive than the base model GT500. But if you want to compare apples to apples with the track pack on both cars, then no, the GT350R is not going to be more expensive than the GT500. But it's going to be something I want to keep an eye on to see once they get all this done for 2020, put the car on the track and see what kind of improvements it's made. Now for that little bit of bonus news that I told you about earlier in the video. Ford is offering another package for the Ranger. Ford claims that there is a demand for a two-wheel drive truck with an off-road package. I know that kind of sounds a little strange, but for those who don't necessarily need four-wheel drive all the time, but you like the look, the extra height, the bigger wheels, the off-road tires, the skid plates, you can get all that now without having to buy the four-wheel drive and the additional FX4 package. Now it's going to be called the FX2. So you get all the skid plates, the extra ride height, the bigger wheels and tires, the side skirts, everything you would normally get with the FX4 package, but in two-wheel drive. 
Now the addition to the two wheel drive is the locking rear. So although you don't have four wheel drive, the locking rear is an addition as opposed to the limited slip. Say like if you wanted to run around in the sand on the beach or something like that, something mild, or take it through an open trail, nothing crazy. Obviously you don't have four wheel drive, but just, you know, put it in a little bit of dirt. Now this has been done before. Toyota's done it with a pre-runner in their Tacoma. Nissan's Frontier has done it. They call it the Desert Runner. So apparently there has been a demand for it and Ford wanted to dip back into that. If this is something that interests you, it is $4,000 cheaper than the FX4 package. So you get the looks, the side skirts, all the off-road stuff, minus the four-wheel drive for $4,000 cheaper. That's about all I have for you now, guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. For all your automotive trends, news, and everything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and that bell notification next to it so you know every time a new video drops and you're the first to be in the know.